Hi, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, and um, welcome to another episode of Issues in Focus with Shibiki Vivos. And today I told you that our topic is passion into productivity, passion into productivity. So as usual, before I start, I would like to pray with each and every one of you so that we can get in the gear this afternoon. And I am pleased you will hear about our participants for today. Uh, there are some young entrepreneurs and I'm so delighted that I had the opportunity of meeting all of them. And trust me, whatever they will share with us today, I wanna motivate some young person to maybe start a business, start get some get some money, it's just, this is COVID period. But even after COVID, it should not stop you from doing something on your own just to get some money. So let's pray before we officially introduce the members who are here today. Great God and eternal Father, we are, which art in heaven, we are thankful for yet another day. I pray in a special way that this broadcast will be able to touch the hearts and lives of someone today. May they be motivated and encouraged to develop their own business, knowing that there are other persons who would have done the same out there. So Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us, guide us, protect us, and direct our pathways through Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, good. So again, to our viewers, remember, I cannot see you if you if you um, just joined the program, but uh, if you're here, you can put a comment somewhere. Hi, Sister Berlin. I'm so happy that you're here very early on time. You can put a comment in the comment section so that I will know definitely that you are viewing. So I'm going to kindly ask um, individuals to introduce themselves. I know some of them are experiencing serious internet issues, but nevertheless, we are going to go through this program. So I'm going to kindly ask individuals to mute their microphones at this point in time. So all individuals on the platform, please mute your microphones. And uh, when you're ready to speak, I'm going to ask you to speak. All right, great. So it's introduction time. So I'm going to allow the individuals to briefly introduce themselves quickly. And um, I don't want to call any name at this point in time. So go right ahead. <laughs> All right, definitely I'll have to call names. So I'll start to the first set of the alphabet. Um, hi, Andrew. Go right ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Ms. Bibles, for having me on this afternoon's live feed. Good afternoon to all the viewers and the participants. My name is Andrew Samson, as you can see. I'm the owner of Crafted Art and Design and Samos Apri. And I also teach small business management at the Ministry of Education, Craft Education. Great. Thank you so much. I'm already hype already, viewers. Hi, Janessa. Good afternoon. Welcome. Hi, Kim. I'm so... Kim, I miss you for a while, but I'm so happy to see you this afternoon. Hi, Renisha. Yes, girlfriend. So today we are going to learn somebody after today's program where you... When these entrepreneurs finish talking to you, somebody will be going and start their own business after today's program. So Kim is viewing from Grenada. I'm so happy to have you as usual on our program. So I'm going to go. I'm going to leave, leave the lady for last. So Trevlon, go right ahead. Trevlon? All right, maybe he has some internet. Okay. All right, while Trevlon, internet is figuring out itself. <laughs> Tom, you go right ahead, dear. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I am Tammy Carmichael Hunt. Actually, I belong to Barbies, which is part of Guyana, but I reside in Linden, which is the, the mining town in Guyana. Now, my first profession, I'm actually a nurse educator, so I'm attached to the Charles Rosa School of Nursing. But, you know, I've been up there for some time, and I realized that there's a great need for a lot of things, so I thought that, you know, I can make something extra on the side because with our salary um you know outside of that it's not too um it's not anything major or large as a lot of people would want to believe and i thought that with my skills and abilities that the lord has blessed me with i can do so much more 
So I decided to venture out into a little small business. And so I'm engaged in event planning. I do a little bit of catering. I do visa applications. And due to the current COVID-19 situation, I've decided I'm going to start to produce some masks some protective reusable masks because we know that's the going thing and the yeah. need for that is so great. So that's what I'm up to currently producing these masks. I'm packaging them and I have a care instruction attached. So our people can, you know, prevention is better than cure. Safety is our business. So that's it in a nutshell. Wow. Thank you so much. So you see, even our young ladies are, are they, they're stepping up to the mark. There is nothing, young women who are listening. God has given each and every one of us abilities. So don't ever feel to yourself because I am a woman. I cannot establish this business. Um, business owners are just supposed to be males. No, there is nothing like that. And I'm so happy I have my females represented here. There are two other females who should have been on the program, but because of severe internet issues, they may or may not be here this afternoon. All right, great. So Treflon, let me hear from you now. Can you kindly thank you, Tammy, for that introduction? Can you kindly introduce yourself to us? Trevlon Craig, just checking in. Are you hearing me? Trevlon? Hi. Hey, All right, hey great. Guys. Thank okay, you. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I'm hearing um, you now. My name is Trevlin Craig. I am 26 years of age. I am a business owner. Um, well, young entrepreneur. Um, uh, and I company Boss Graphics. Uh, Boss Graphics mean that these mostly with marketing uh, small businesses and uh, aiding big, big businesses as well. Uh, our services are like uh, web honors. Anything that deals. Well, I am not a uh, a owner of uh, let's say employees as yet, <laughs> but I manage everything most. All right. So, so, so yes. Trevor, could you could you break down some of the things that you do? I'm going to come back. And you please know that question because I know Tamley would have given a nice book. Um, she broke down what her business, what she does exactly. So I'm going to come back to you, Andrew, just for you to tell me exactly what your business, um, what you engage in. So Trevor, what are some of the things do you do as a business owner in terms of your business arena? All right, again, so what would happen? Hi, um, Zachary, welcome. Lisa, hi, welcome to you. Remember, the only how I can know that you're viewing is if you comment in the comment section, then I'll know definitely you're here with us. All right, so Trevlon has been experiencing some internet problems. I said it on one of my programs that I need a new CEO for the internet company. So I hope one of you young people listening to me can one day open an internet service that Guyanese people don't have to be complaining and we don't have to be, you know, our internet don't have to be sticking when we come to platforms like these. But Andrew, could you break down your business for me? Your microphone is muted. <laughs> As mentioned earlier, apologies, uh, I operate uh, three businesses, Craftic uh, Art Design, Craftic Photos, and Samuels Apron. Basically, Craftic Art and Design, what we focus on is graphic design, uh, whether it's flyers, banners, um, signboards, and so on. And then, of course, uh, Craftic Photos, it's mainly events and zooming in in particular to weddings and i have samuel's apron which entails beehive removal and natural honey so those are the three areas that i cover and basically the services that i offer in, in those areas wow so photography hmm. um the apiary natural by the way for those of you who like honey you know sometimes we go into the store and we buy honey but it's not honey but it's just sugar, sugar. with sugar. water and they just they just have a jello yeah. looking nice 
we are talking here about natural honey. And you, when I come to Guyana, please have my bottle there. Tell me about my price. I'm going to purchase one of those honeys from you because it's something that I'm keeping abreast with, with my when it comes to my voice, using my honey regularly. So yes, make yes, sure yes. that you have my bottle secure there. No problem. And so I have seen, I want to, I just want to mention, um, before I go into more questions, I, I have seen Andrew's work in terms of his photography. Do you still do jerseys? I can hardly make up what you guys are saying. Yes, we also do t-shirt uh, printing. Yeah, I'm hardly what you guys a are saying. Of All right, just a moment. So what will happen, Trevlon, because you're having severe internet issues, what I can ask you to do in terms of, um, maybe I'll just put a question in the private chat section and then you just comment your response there and I am going to tell the audience there what you would have mentioned, right? Is that all right with you? Yes. All right, great. Thank you. All right, so um, yes, Andrew. So I was asking if you still do jerseys. Yes, we're still doing apparel printing, um, t-shirts, jerseys, and so on. That, that, is still, that is still there. All right, great. Thank you. So to all of our brides to be, hmm, um, when you want your jerseys done, you know, we will always have, um, um, I've, I've seen one of the jerseys lately, um, it marked uh, what? The boss, the jersey for the man, it marked the boss, and then for the woman, it marked the, um, is the bigger boss? Anyway, Possibly something, of, boss. Yeah. <laughs> something <laughs> of that sort, but whatever you want, you know, you can, you can actually, um, check with Andrew and you will get your connection for those who need your mask right now check with Tamni you will have your mask in session you will have everything that you need those of you who need designing any form of designing maybe you you want a new logo created and things like that Trevlon is the person you contact him and he is going to help you with that so um, I just want to say welcome to Andre um thank you for being here this afternoon imagine andrew you already have a customer somebody is asking how can i get in contact with a guy that sells honey so it means that you guys are already on the go to make money hi leon welcome this afternoon so if you need your mask you need your designs you need your honey you need whatever craft the, um your jersey's been made or designed check with these individuals they will comment um they will put their contact information so you will get to see them contact me personally also so that at the end of the day we can support our local entrepreneurs and what they're doing so let me go to my next question um permit me i'm going to call you entrepreneurs this afternoon and um forgive me if i don't respond to your names all the time but i'm, I'm going to start with um tamni what inspired you well you would have mentioned a bit of it in terms of what inspired you to to start um to start your business but do you want to add any more information to that? Was it up? Uh, did you have an in passion or, or something of the sort? Well, firstly, I used to do what I do for free. Then I realized, you know what? I could actually attach a cause that's affordable to it because, as I said, my abilities and so on, persons like it and persons are pleased with what's going on. So I told myself, you know what? I could actually make this thing official. And so I decided to go in that direction. And so I'm successful. Something that I did not mention is that sooner or later, you're going to see a product in which we're going to be making. It's, it's going to be meat, but we're going to be seasoning it, packaging it, and selling it. So there will be fish, chicken, and beef. Because in our part of the country, that's not too available, right? You have the, the, the flat and ordinary stuff, but I'm gonna be seasoning this thing, packaging it and making it available. Again, I'm, I'm looking at the needs of persons and also promoting yes. health in our country. Beautiful. So to all my meat eating friends out there, you love your fish. I don't eat chicken, I eat beef, maybe only in pepper pot in December month, but I love my fish. So for those of you, you know, times are getting hard. And you, you, in fact, not really times are getting hard, but you're getting more busy. So check out Tamni very soon. Tamni, how soon can you promise you're on a live feed right now? There might be people contacting me after this program. So how soon do we expect to get that, that particular aspect of your business up and running? I'm looking at August, the beginning August of August. Month. That should be up and available. 
excellent you gotta catch your swari time right because after swari people don't people don't ever go and you know clean fish and clean this and clean that right it's a perfect time to catch them all right great all right so i want to say welcome to vernon vernon benans i don't know if you're hearing me vernon but welcome to you this afternoon all right again um some serious internet issues some persons are having so andrew what motivated you to start your business Well, for me, it, I believe this sort of started from, from my teen, teenage years, where I had a good friend of mine. We, we both were into graphic design and, and especially tinting of vehicle. We were very, um, we were like fanatics when it, when it came to tinting vehicles and cars and these things, you know, fancy work. And we always had this dream to have our good. own business along this good afternoon. line. afternoon. I can hear you. I hope you can hear me too. Yes, I'm hearing you now, Vernon. Welcome. So we're taking a feedback from Andrew. I'm going to come to you in a few. Go ahead, yeah, Andrew. So, so this was a childhood something where, where we always had this dream to have our own business along the graphic design field. But it never became... Um, something of, of reality or substance to me until some years after while I was working abroad, I came across an article in the Forbes magazine from one of the world's uh, most famous philanthropists, um, Warren Buffett, where he made a statement and he said, never depend on a single source of income, rather make investments to create other sources of income. And that, that quote really struck me. And because of that, it, it became a motivating factor for me um, to, to have my That's own, you know, to develop my, my gifts and make money from it. So I would say those two factors combined um, have me where I am today. Excellent. Wow. Thank you so much for that information. Wow. Treflon, are you hearing me now? So I'm kindly asking individuals to mute their microphones if you're not speaking. I don't know. Trevlon, you hearing? All right. All right, great. Um, so in terms of um at what age I must ask, um, did you did you know that you had a passion? Because you remember many of the times we have a passion within us to do certain things, but then we don't come out because I want our young, our young people who are listening to know that um, it doesn't matter your age. You may be 16 right now, 17 right now, and you want to establish a business, but you're thinking you're too young. So I just want to hear from our, from these individuals here this afternoon, at what age? were you at when you realized that you had this kind of passion within you to establish your business well i was about 20 21 but i never really actually got around to doing it until i was 27 you know children and all that so at 27 i made it official but this whole realization earlier in life early 20s i would say but as i said before and it's every night actually started it hmm. thank you andrew what about you well for me the, the the passion was there from a from a tender age but the the drive to actually make it into a business only became reality in my later late last years of my team but the, the passion itself for, for the designing and the art and everything. That was there from childhood. I remember uh, teachers like uh, Miss Monet, at the time my nurse's school teacher, she would always in, in, encourage me to draw on the board when it's school party. Uh, wow. Miss, Miss Cameron, for those uh, viewers who know Sue's like primary, Miss Cameron, she was always encouraging me to draw on the board, draw Santa Claus and these things on the board. And all of that became a, a drive and a motivation for me to keep up the, the, the gift or the talent and mm -hmm. then put it to something today. 
wow look at that early age and that is why i always tell individuals i remember when i um for those individuals who know i started um when i started my rosette business i mean and today's this where i first met and i met andrew we were at the um the conference uh there was a couple oh, one hundred twenty years yes that was i still have them <laughs> you still have them <laughs> that was i think it was in 2017 when um uh, afterwards i i was working part-time too and i um i was no longer working there all right and i recognized i said hey i need to do something because after i did doing co i did business in college i did business at school and i love business and i'm like but Shibiki, you're you're talented why are you not putting your talent into something but it made me imagine i had to lose a job my part-time job before i recognized that i can actually do something for myself and when i started that business i recognized i had great pleasure sitting down and just um doing rosettes i started right now on facebook but it's not really active because i haven't done rosette in a while um shibiki fivers rosette gallery that was my business name i i made rest i made on my receipt book everything because for me it was like it's still a passion but just that other things took you know I had other interests um, along the way, but I recognized that this this business here it was able to give me some monies that I needed at this point in time. So I want to encourage our young people who are listening, or even if you're an adult, you might well not so young. You may be in your thirties, forties, fifties, and you still have that passion within. It is not too late for making to, for turning that passion into productivity. I always say that each and every one of us we have a purpose on, in life, and we can decide what we want to accomplish in a purpose so it it's always our decision to make all right um let me see if i'm going to get any one of these guys now all right while i'm trying to get them connected the next question i want you guys to ponder on um what was your mission at the out uh on the onset of your business what did you what did you really want to accomplish? Was it only a financial accomplishment or you wanted to accomplish other things? Well, I wanted to meet people's needs and I wanted persons to be satisfied with the product or the outcome outside of financial satisfaction, right? So those were my basic goals initially okay what about you andrew my my mission at the outset would have been i believe it's founded in one of my taglines it's the tagline for our craft art and design where it says um where art goes the extra mile uh, mm. my 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 motive there was to actually give clients or give customers something extra that they wouldn't be able to get from anywhere else because most times you find uh companies or businesses their their customer service is only at a certain level and for crafting or for my business i try to go that extra step to offer customers um satisfaction and, and happiness with, with the service and overall with the product that they receive nice lovely huh i i am I'm, I'm impressed i'm so sorry that we're not getting um getting trevlon to connect neither vernon to connect but um just to let you know a bit for those who are just joining us welcome trevlon he actually does designing and uh, and um designing for companies i've known he would have done many work for persons overseas different companies overseas will actually connect with him and um he would do their logos their letters and a whole sort of thing but i i wanted him to explain but i'm not getting the connection so hopefully if i get him to type the message in i'm going to inform you vernon recently would have started a healthy lifestyle magazine and um it has long i think the first uh issue was launched this month here where yes in june here and where he is we have like different articles from different individuals encouraging our young people and the book is relatively very cheap i think it's at 300 dollars for soft copy or 400 dollars for the hard copy i'm not 100 percent certain but that's guyana dollars by the way for those who are listening to me from trinidad or from um the other parts of the caribbean right and um this copy this this book is actually to encourage our young people 
um, in different articles, spirituality and 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 um, healthy lifestyle segments. So it would have been an. Um, I know for sure those of you individuals. I know I have a lot of contacts on. So uh, the next issue that is, um, I will private message some people and for you to support our young people when they would they, would, they start their venture. All right. So my next question. Um, how do you advertise your product? Or the service that you're offering well in both cases you're doing products all right <laughs> well i use social media chat this right? always happens when I everybody love, is ready, and the opportunity to go first because you know i'm always <laughs> jumping first but nevertheless you know, he's trying to be the gentleman. So I use social media, Facebook, WhatsApp, and I also have um flyers and so on. And there are others who advertise to me through social media also. Okay, lovely. Well, I, ha I haven't received a copy as yet, so it means it has not gone everywhere as yet. So please ensure that you tag me with something, send me some documents so I can actually post this information in my in my page. And for those who are listening, you can please ensure that you like the page issues and focus with Shubiki Vivals and you will see updates about these different things so that you can actually continue to support our young people. All right, thank you very much, Tamni. Um, what about you, Andrew? For me, I I use social media, in particular Facebook and Instagram. Um I, I recall some years ago, I, I spoke with a guy, Sion Samuels from Jamaica, and he, he told me, he said, Andrew, you're wasting time at that time. He said, you're wasting mm -hmm. time because you're sitting on a gold mine and you're not advertising your business. And he said, I can help you or I can give you tips and you can utilize Facebook because that time Facebook was the hype. Um, yeah. Utilize Facebook make use of it because it's free advertising they're, they're offering you free advertising there on a platform you just got to know how to use it so that that has been my main platform for advertising and recently i started um on instagram and so far it's been it's been going good i've received lots of business through both um medias so it's good okay good and um i think one of the things that i don't know what is it if it's um if if it's a conclusive statement i can make here but i know many of the times when we have businesses so many people who have businesses right now are young people and i recognize that advertising has been one of the things we have been falling back in so it's like people don't know that we have something we have a good thing going we have reasonable prices we have so many products but yet still we, do, we don't have anything to show because nobody hears about it so we depend upon our little families and our little friends in the corner to do our little promotion and then we find cases where they might not be 100 percent happy for you so they're not pushing your business as how you would want it to be pushed right so i think um for those of you who are listening advertise Advert advertising it, it's important it's pivotal for any business success and for persons to um get in contact with what you're actually doing and um on that note on the note of advertising now i don't know tamni do you have any samples of your actual products that you have to show the audience at this point in time no i'm sorry we're all sold out we're wow. in the process of of um making some more right but as of an hour ago all sold out wow those are the face masks yes i don't have the the hard copy if you want to put it that way but i have yeah. soft copy and i'll forward those to you later down all right nice nice so folks come on people right now i heard schools in guyana they officially open now or something like that yes the the those that are taking exams the students that are taking exams the national grade six and okay. those for cxc and this morning we had to send some over to the schools because that's the reason why i have not even one on hand wow so folks listen all of you those of you who have to go back to school please note just get in contact with me i mean i have tamni's address she's living right in the west coast of barbie's even if you're living in Georgetown, there is no excuse. It doesn't matter where in Guyana you live in. As long as the any vehicles part, are driving. Any any, well, except, could you go into region? And I do delivery also. I do delivery also. Nice, lovely. So 
Can you share with me the regions that you can touch base with at this point in time for those who are listening? Um, I would more look at the inland regions. So I've gone to region 10, region 4, region 6, region 5. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you see, folks, and even if you're out of that region and you know somebody coming down to Georgetown, just let them know. Get connected with Tamni so that she can sell you. Just a phone call away, exactly. And could you just, this is very important at this point in time. What, what about your pricing for your product? Can you tell us the price so the right, person so can know? We have a wholesale price and a retail price. We also have masks for adults and for children. Children, okay. you can get one for $300. That's retail and two forty dollars wholesale. In terms of the adults, $300 wholesale and $400 retail. So you see, it's very, very affordable. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. Thank you. I love that. I love that. All right, good. So Andrew, right now, he is going to share his screen at this point in time. And he's going to show you the products that he has been actually, um, that he is, well, his business is governed. So go right ahead. Andrew Sheldon, welcome to you. All right, basically, as I said earlier, it's three uh, businesses, uh, Samus Apri, Craftic Art and Design, and Craftic Photos. Uh, what we have offering on the Samus Apri, it's beehive removal and uh, natural honey. And this honey, it, it comes in various sizes, and you can get as low as $600 for one. Uh, we do hive removals. This was a hive removed from a, from an old fridge uh, when it all started, and of course the honey brand. So soon enough, you'll be seeing this brand in the supermarkets, in supermarkets near you. This was the first batch, but of course all sold out. I'm hoping to get more pretty soon. And then of course, crafted art and design, where we do graphic design, lighted signs. Uh, we cover banners, vinyl banners for crusades, etc. We cover uh, whether it's whatever religious organization you're from, we, we can take care of vinyl uh, banner printing. Uh, play schools as well, we do vinyl printing for those. And of course, labels, product labels. So if you have Vaseline, you're, whatever you're, you're manufacturing, we can do labels for you, barcoding, everything, whatever is your product we can do the labels for you. And of course, t-shirt printing. Bridal I'm seeing that I like party. that. One of the bride. Party, we <laughs> can deal with the bridal party. Uh, if you have, you know, you want to give a token to one of your, your, your favorite aunt or something, we have that. If you want to have your staff looking unique with uh, jerseys, we can do that as well. And of course, uh, for your church group, you can have your t-shirts or jerseys printed to be recognized. And finally, crafted photos. We mainly focus on wedding, but we also do other events as, um, you know, pageants. This was uh, the police force um, pageant. So we, we cover all of these events. Of course, the, the brides, they're, they're, they're not left out. We make them look beautiful we make them look beautiful so no regret in hiring crafted photos uh whatever is that event we will make you look good and that's it oh great great thank you so can i hire you one time for my wedding of course of course <laughs> um, i have to have that drop down somewhere i have to have that drop down somewhere so you're you're covered you're covered. <laughs> all right, great. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you very much for that. So, viewers, you have it all there. Just take note of that, you know. You don't have to worry. Okay, great. So, even with, um, so, Andrew, your location is? Sue's Dyke. Sue's Dyke on the east bank of the Marar. Sue's Dyke back road, to be exact. All right, great. So, listen, so the, the last person, Trevlon, that was on, for those of you viewing, his internet is extremely terrible. But he is messaging me some stuff. So he lives on uh, at Corriverton, and that's way down for those Barbicians who know Corriverton. I mean, there's oh. next to Skeldon, not far from Suriname borders. So 
he is also he also does fl um, flyers banners um web designs facebook marketing different cards and all of those things so while andrew Andrew has a portion of that business so you see the location so if you're from barbies and you may not be able to travel down to the east bank you can connect with trevlon i'll also leave his contact information there um if you're around that area you can connect with andrew but you have a decision to make you have a choice to make but i'm so happy um do you have a vehicle you're moving around with right yes uh i'm able to do deliveries because i have transportation i'm able to get to you wherever you are okay excellent so Trevor, all right great so Trevor also transportation available oh that's good so we have our business sent for those individuals who are teachers and everything get get in contact with these guys don't know if by chance they can offer you discount along the way but um, you and them have that conversation and and trust me, let us support our local business individuals who are people who are striving um to get things done and um how would you i mean we're talking here to a bunch of young persons who are viewing some persons with please remember you can share this video to anyone on your page to encourage and motivate some other young person who has a passion within them but they don't know how to turn this passion into productivity to make some monies of their own so the question i'm going to ask you guys now is how do you personally define business success what would be your definition of business success All right, so all right. <laughs> so to answer that, I often would tell my, my students because my, my my goal here is to encourage and motivate them to create their own small business. And for me to measure the success of your business, it has to do with the influence on the market and customer satisfaction. Hmm. The influence in the market, it entails how far into or how deep into the market, how you can infiltrate the market with other competitors and be able to build a good clientele. That will tell if your business is successful. And of course, you have the customer satisfaction. If customers are able to receive your services and then return for more that says something about your business and your product yeah. so the two combining the the ability to infiltrate the market and the ability to have customers returning to you for more that i believe can uh deem your business as one that is successful hmm. thank you very much what about you tamni Microphone. Your microphone is muted, Tamni. All right. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I was just experiencing some difficulties. Nevertheless, when it comes to success of a business, I would agree with Andrew, the name is yes, with Andrew in terms of customer satisfaction. As long as your customers are satisfied, they definitely return, they definitely will tell others, and your demand will increase. So I would say again, customer satisfaction. And also, when the customer is satisfied, automatically, you feel overwhelmed, you feel pleased, right? And you want to continue down the same road. So that is basically it in a nutshell. Great, thank you so much. And and you know, there is a saying, um, customers will either build or break your business. And sometimes our um, our entrepreneurs don't know this. So you feel as if you you can you can deal how you want with individuals, and you expect that okay, 
they are just going to automatically come back at your business many of the times we don't have a monopoly in the market so if we're not the only one controlling things in the market people will only come back based on what you have actually given to them so these are just some tips i want our our young people who are listening our audience in general to listen to get so if you're thinking about starting your business these are some of the things you should take into consideration hi Vernon and ben and can you hear me now loud and clear all right that sounds like it so can welcome you hear me? officially yes i'm hearing you so welcome officially so Vernon, um right. just tell us briefly about the service that you're actually offering right now Okay, well, basically, it's a monthly magazine called 21st Century Health and Lifestyle. Uh, it's really designed for the Christian community and the information that we will be providing or my, um, my team and I will be providing will be credible, relevant and current information um, that is to be reached to the um, Christian community. We'll be looking at, um, you know, various, di the various dimensions of life. Um, and also be looking at the philosophical questions people ask themselves from time to time. The four philosophical questions. Okay. Um, in addition, you know, it, it carries out of features like uh, a regular paper, classify ads, uh, children's corner. But um, most importantly, the content of the information that will be shared uh, will be structured in such a way that is reader friendly and that uh, people can relate and connect to. It's not just gonna be like a thesis or a long paper, but you know, a lot of people will be speaking from the first and second person um, to some degree, just so that people could uh, connect, relate, and you know, feel a part of what's happening and can really um, you know, understand what's up. So we're looking at local content, we look at worldviews, we look at different aspects um, of life um, so that uh, uh, really the information is to help us to, as Christians, to think critically as um, we wait for the second coming of Christ and so also that we can live a healthy life. All right. Basically. And what's the cost? So, so, so answer me this question. So if I'm not Christian, can I not buy your magazine too? Oh, yes, yes. Um, the information um, do have a spiritual and a health emphasis but um we have people who are non-christians who have bought the magazine uh, what we do you know we try to sign up people to receive a monthly subscription but there are others okay. also that do uh, buy the magazine and what's the cost for your magazine well it's available via soft copy and a hard copy so the soft copy is going at 300 dollars a month and the hard copy is four hundred dollars dollars a month. We make it very affordable so that everybody can get a copy. Definitely, and just a month. So imagine to our viewers, just imagine you're spending how much money? Four hundred dollars. That's like money for like an ice cream. Some of you go and you purchase more than a four hundred dollars ice cream, right? So um, that's that's a magazine, and every purchase you actually supporting a team of young people who came together with this initiative. It's an excellent initiative called the Twenty First Century Health and Lifestyle, where you your your four hundred dollars will go a far way in just in continuous in terms of printing, in terms of helping these young people develop. So I'm so happy for the initiative, and I'm so happy in advance for your support in this business venture. So I'm going to ask you another question just before um, I move on to bringing back Andrew into this segment. Um, in terms of um, how do you personally advertise the program, um, the, your product now? I know your first article was launched this month here. So how do you advertise it? Vernon, are you there? All right. All right, so I must say to the viewers, wow. Um, Today's the first day in a while I have all my, my the persons on my program, they're Guyanese. And um, <laughs> so it, it's the first time. So it just proves my internet, um, the internet thing. So Andrew, I'm so happy that you, where you live, you still have um, reasonable connections going for you. All right, Um, so Andrew, 
even as we wait, hopefully that Vernon comes on back. Um, what are some risks do you take or um, did you take while establishing your business? When I, when I thought about this, the fear came back to me. Two risks, hmm. I, two risks I took. One, I spent all my savings. And two, wow. I left one country to go to another country to start up, not knowing what will happen. So just, just hold on a minute. So you're trying to tell me you had this initiative in mind. You left Guyana, went to a foreign land just to start your business? No, the, the, the other way around. Um, the, the thing oh. is, I, I, when, I, when I left Guyana um, in 2009, I I had the, the, the motivation or the intent to, to start the business where I was at the time. But of course, you know, being abroad, um, there are certain laws and regulations that you have yeah. to go through before you can actually set up a business in, in, in a foreign land. So for me to now um, take everything that I had at the time and then come back here to set up, I see it as a risk because I didn't know what uh, challenges I would have faced here. In essence, I didn't really do a, a proper market research before I came mm. to start up the business. And then, of course, as mentioned, the, the, the savings. You, you just had to take the risk. And that, in essence, that is what an entrepreneur does. He, he takes a risk to set up a business. And that's what I did. And, and here I am today. I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Wow. So, ha, so my tip to those individuals who are out there, um, you know, some of you, you always feel, I mean, and you took a big step and I'm happy that God was with you and you were able to, you're still here today and expanding because when I first met Andrew in 2017, Andrew, you were only doing craft tech, right? I'm not certain if you had your photography up and running. Correct. I, I was only doing craft tech. Um, the photography thing was just... Uh, it, it was it wasn't even really dear I, I was doing it for free in essence wow wow and then you um and the the apiary started when that started about uh two years ago roughly roughly about two years ago so you see what that is saying to us to our young people this when it comes to establishing a business i'm big on business um i always would want to say business is risking I wouldn't advise you like Andrew to take all your life savings into something you may not 100% you might lose in the process, but then you have to take risks, right? And um, know how far, how much you can invest. But many of the times, some of us, we are afraid. We have this, we have this great passion within us. We have these great talents within us, but our problem is that we are so afraid of taking risks because why? We're always afraid of failure. So this afternoon's program, you listen to somebody, you recognize that, hey, it doesn't mean because of the fact that this person may have failed, it means that I would fail. I have, I will fail. So I'm so happy that there is someone here this afternoon with us who would have taken the risk of investing his life, saving into a business. And today he has expanded not just one, two, but the third, three, basically um, ideal businesses. And it all comes under his name. So what about you? What do you want to own? What do you want to be the CEO of right now? So you have the ability, you have the potential. Just make it a reality. Let me see if Vernon is now back. Vernon, you're there now? Yes, I'm back. All right, great. Uh, the internet is giving lots of trouble. Yeah, I understand. Apparently, there is an internet issue because almost everyone I communicated from Guyana today, they told me they had something to do, some, like something um information about the internet. Whew uh right. it makes my heart sick sometimes so um finally you, the question is um i was I, I was on the verge of the question how do you advertise your product or service well uh well social media is one but um what i do quite a bit i would actually call people from my contact list um okay. i would reach people also in uh, business places and people that I will even walk into in the street, I would just tell them about it and encourage them to get signed up, uh, maybe even to do an advertisement because we do advertisement 
also okay. in the magazine, which is um, going pretty good so far. Oh, interesting. So, Andrew, I think you need to touch in base there. Um, use use their magazine to advertise your product too. So, I'm happy, and that's how you know we can have this connection base going because I may not. There are some persons who are looking right now. The first time they're actually hearing about Andrew Samson. This is the first time they're actually hearing about Vaughn. I know the first time, sorry, that Tamni had to leave, but this is the first time that perhaps they're ever hearing about Tamni. So what is the thing about it? I want us to, to form a collaboration, a collaborative effort whereby we can actually connect with each other. So wherever you are, you can basically make your connection. Um, Esther Samuel, she would have been another person whom I would have had, I would have been happy to have on the program, but because of some reason, she couldn't be here. But Esther basically designs wedding dresses. She makes bride, bridesmaid dresses. Um, she does complete makeup. Um, I know there's a big thing with us ladies right now when it comes to our lace frontal wigs that we love so much. She would actually, she actually does that. So imagine you connecting with Esther in terms of getting your hair done, her sewing your dress, getting your attendee stuff together um i think she has crowns doing your makeup and everything and then you have andrew to take your um to take your pictures right and then of course you will see maybe one of your picture they advertise in vernon's magazine because of the fact that um right. he's advertising the basis so we want to form a collaborative effort as young people and if there's anybody else out there listening and you want to know some more business tips you want to get some ideas you want to connect with these individuals um in order for them to help you to um, start your own business. Feel free, make connections with me. I can get you on hook up to, to some of these individuals so that we, as young people, we can be strong. We can be, we can move from one point in our lives to, to the to the next. Remember, not because you have a government job, it means that that's the only thing that is sufficient for you. No, no, no. You can step about, step out of your link and do something, um, do something else for yourself. Um, the other question, um. Vernon, one more question before I involve, I get Andrew um, back in. Um, how would you define business success? Well, what should I say? Well, business success really um, is sticking to the task and um, having that passion and being creative to actually achieve your goal. So. Um, once you can stick to the task, has, have the passion and, and that determination and that drive, um, definitely you will achieve success. Hmm. Um, that is my take on it. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. I just want to read something from Trevlon. Trevlon was the person, he was on audio, but because of internet issue, he had to come out. And I, I, I really, this is so touching to me. Um, the question when I ask him, you know, what inspired him for starting his own business? And I know that this may inspire someone out there right now who are listening. Um, he was actually working with organizations before. And um, while he was doing that, he recognized that he was earning, he wasn't earning much money. And he knew to himself that he had a passion, he had a drive in terms of um, for creating logos and marketing products and doing those things. So because of that, he, he said, you know what? He should stop for wasting his time fulfilling someone's dream. So due to that, he decided to say, you know what? I am going to open my own business. I am going to do something for me. And because of that, until a day like today, he is now marketing, marketing, making logos and making designs for persons internationally in the U.S. And I am so happy about that. Just imagine, just to say that. So some of you, you may be in an organization and you're feeling you're not comfortable. But then sometimes God is saying, step out in faith, do something, do what makes you happy. Um, I'm so happy. Um, uh, Brother Leon Chichess is saying he's 100% in support of you guys. And um, I like what Sister Grelin comment. She said, um, being an entrepreneur is commendable. She believed the program with some of our, um, she be, I believe the program with some of our people. We don't know how to speak to customers. The problem rather. E exactly. So some of us, you know, as individuals, even those of you who are listening to me right now, um, know how to speak to your customers. It may, it may, that will determine you being a just an ordinary business person and you being a great business individual, a great entrepreneur. And as Leon rightly said, 
being persistent is the key and not being afraid of failure so if you're afraid of failure you will never ever you may never venture out into your business but be like andrew take your monies invest again i'm not telling you take your whole salary right but <laughs> all your your savings but invest you never know where that can take you all right so my next question to both of you right now um do you guys have employees working along or people working along with you well uh, yeah i have um someone that's working with me uh, i plan to get at least one more person and that is to do some field work some marketing and such like especially when i return to usc so they're being paid certainly <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just checking it out <laughs> all right certainly, great. Certainly. <laughs> And I want to add a note just before Andrew speaks is that Vernon is, he is um, currently second or third year. I just want to get it right. I'm going into fourth year September. So I call wow. myself fourth year right now. <laughs> My apologies. All right. So Vernon is now well. Um, he's entering his fi final year. Uh, he's a theology student at the University of the Southern Caribbean here in Trinidad. But of course, he's Guyanese. And um, imagine he found something to do while he's at home. And not because he's returning to school, whether it's September or January, depending upon the COVID situation, um, he is still doing something. So even with your purchase of the magazine will help to help to finance his tuition and even with those individuals who are on the team. So don't be afraid, support for a good cause. So yes, Andrew, the same question I'm, I'm asking, do you have employees or working along with individuals? I, I do not have employees to see but I have persons who assist in, in, in various parts because sometimes you may have a wedding shoot or a birthday party or something. So I normally would have uh, my nephew or, or, or a friend or so come along with me. And of course, they, they would receive um, a payment. And for the April, that I have my uh, some of my brothers who would assist me and nephews, of course, um, they work along in that field. But not um, to say that you have persons employed. Mm. Okay. Okay, interesting. Nice, nice, nice. So even as um, I, I just want to uh, say to our audience, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes, you know, we quick to go and say, okay, we need to get employees. But sometimes we just need to take on persons to do a portion a portion a portion manage what we can manage don't overburden yourself um don't kill yourself with your job there are times when you recognize i hear what help is needed right so when you realize that um help is needed go on that way get somebody else to work with you and do the necessary hi okola welcome to you um <laughs> yes andrew yeah andrew's generally a nice guy <laughs> all right great so um my next question uh at one point at what point um let me see oh before i move on to the other question here um how do you think in terms of in with those individuals vernon especially you have persons working along with you have you encountered any conflicts so far and even andrew with the persons you take on do you uh, have you ever found yourself encountering issues you know as being the owner of the business and having people to work along with you Well, none so far, and um, I am a very careful person when I actually try to get uh, involved with uh, getting people on the team. So I have someone that is competent, and um, I know their ability, and there is no conflict currently. I hope none shall arise, but if they do, I believe they will be handled uh, amicably. Hmm. Yes. All right. Andrew? Issues. Issues, problems. I I wouldn't say so, but the challenge that I find in having persons work with me, and this is in particular with craft, trick, art, and design, because the, the business is it's a technical area, because in graphic design, it calls for a lot of technical work and detail, yeah. decision and so on. The challenge is there because you, you cannot find somebody who 
who has the, the skills and the, the mindset to do that type of work. So it becomes, for me, it becomes somewhat of a burden at times on me, on my shoulders, when I have to do all of it. Um, and of course, if you to hire a professional um, graphic designer to work along there with you, you would have to get some real good money to be picking them from such a, a small uh, business enterprise. Hmm. Nice, nice. So, huh. You see, and um, another thing too, for some of you young people who want to establish your business, um, I know some of you have excellent initiatives and you want to do so much, but then in terms of working, the, the ability to work along with people, you don't have that. So I, I would suggest that some of you do some nice, do reading, know, get, get to know how to get along with people and all of those things so that when you really and truly start working with individuals, you will face less conflicts as the time. Um, continues. So just a few questions before we wrap up. Um, so after what you're doing right now, do you think it is it time consuming your business? My, I, I would All never right. say it is time consuming mm -hmm. because I, I learned something from Stephen Jepson a professor from Florida who I worked with. He yeah. said, time flies when you're having fun. True. And if you are doing a business and you love it, you will never see it as a burden or time consuming in, on, on your part. Yeah. I mean, it's um, certain to us you, you're doing, it will take time, but not the time consuming in the negative light as as a burden, some something or so on. Because while you're doing it, you're having fun and eventually you oh it's all that time, time pass, pass finish, you're on to the next um job. Excellent. Verna. Okay, well, for me, um I believe mine is very much time consuming to some degree actually. Um, especially when uh, you know the, I think the type of business that I'm involved in um, we're you know it's more like a startup and um, you have to try to build well, uh, customers get people to yeah. subscribe callbacks um, you, I have to edit uh, uh, stuff people's um, information when they, they send it to me those um, articles um, you got to find stories you got to write so for me, at the moment, it's very time consuming because um, of the manpower or the personnel mm -hmm. is working along with me. So I mostly do um, the bulk of the work at the moment. And the reason is to um, save cash, uh, which, you know, is yeah. a challenge. But I think generally it will continue to be time consuming somewhat, especially when you as the leader trying to push as hard as possible to grow the business. True. Um, so at the moment it is to get people signing up every day and, and going through the script with them so that they could understand, getting them to sign up, the whole works. All right. Hmm. And um, what in terms of when you would have turned your passion, both of you, when you would have turned your passion into productivity, did you get discouraged along the way? Well, if I should go first, um, <laughs> when I started, you know, I was excited as first, which is typically me. And then as I get, I was going through, you know, I was like, I never thought this thing was so much of work. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was like, kind of, I was like, should I go through with it or not? Because it's like so much of work to to get it done because remember you're writing everything got to be on point it got to make sense you got to get customers um so i was like is it worth it but then you know after reading so many books and listening to so many um successful business people you know um i realized that you know it, it's going to take time to build the business and to grow the business definitely and you just got to keep working and working and working and every day once you keep working hard, it's going to keep growing. You take one step at a time. So I'm very happy right now with where it is. I know uh, it's a it's a kind of business that is a continuous job um, work. You just can't lay back and say, well, okay, 
I'm done, I get enough customer or whatever. It's, it's a continuous process, yeah. research and everything else. Hmm. Thank you. Andrew? I, I believe once you enter into small business or business operation, you, you will be discouraged somewhere along the line. It, it's reality. And this, I believe, yeah. is the fear of many persons who would like to get into business. They fear that the discouragement will be too much and they'll end up giving up. And I've experienced it because when I started up crafting art and design, doing graphic design and so on, I remember there were times when my printers or, or art equipment, they just started to malfunction and I couldn't fix it. I had tons of t-shirts to print the next day and it got so frustrating that I say, you know what, when this job done, I done. <laughs> I remember in, in, in two months time, I changed two printers. Working with one printer, it clogged up, it stopped working. Went and purchased another one, same thing happened. I said, that's it. And it, it becomes frustrating. Um, and finally, in terms of the Samos April, when I started that up some months ago, I, I was dealing with these in, in, in my backyard and trying to manage them, get them in order. And these bees were so aggressive that I, I, I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to come back tonight and I'm going to burn everybody up and I'm going to stop this business. <laughs> I ain't able with this thing. These things sting in too much and I can't get them under control. But you had to take a breather, think. Yeah. Think to yourself, you know what? It, it calls for patience, it calls for sacrifice. And I just had to keep it that way. And I, I'm, I'm still going. I'm still going. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. Hi, Curtis Blair. Welcome. Good to see you, bro. All right. So, for those of you who are now, we are looking at, we are I'm interviewing two wonderful um, entrepreneurs right now. Uh, Vernon Bennett, he is now the, um, I don't know if to call him the founder, the director, but he would have started the 21st Century Health and Lifestyle um, edition, magazine edition. And um, I'm just imploring all of you to um, purchase it. It's just $300 for the soft copy, $400 for the hard copy. And then I have Andrew Sampson. He is the the owner, um, the founder of Craft Tech. Um, all your, in terms of your banners, your your ads and everything, he's located on the East Bank of the Moraro. Check him out. He also have an, uh, he has an apiary. Um, so those of you who love honey, honey, and you're fed up with the, 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 um, the sugary honey that is being sold in the markets and in the supermarkets, check with him. He, you will get original honey, all the contact information and everything you will get a little later on from him. And of course, he also does, uh, when it comes to wedding photography so whatever event you have you can contact him for your photography work so just after the program you can just the contact information will be there call him find out price you guys negotiate and trust me just support our young people here so i have two more questions before we wrap up um what do you think is a common mistake that many entrepreneurs make what is a common mistake that you think many young entrepreneur entrepreneurs make At least you can name one of them. Uh, uh, failing to do a proper feasibility study. Oh, yes. You're talking my language must, there. Mm -hmm. Right. And the other thing is to giving your business time to grow. Hmm. All right. So feasibility study, um, just for those who are listening, um, you're basically looking and see how feasible your business is. You're taking into consideration all the different pros and cons. And then you decide, can I really go into this business venture or should I hold up? Um, would my investment worth it? And all of those things. So you have to ensure that you do proper study, proper assessment. Um, some people go in further to say do an official business plan with all your different section, your marketing analysis, your business section. Um, I'm forgetting my business content here. And there are two other sections that, oh, management section. And I can't remember the other section that you do. Ensure you have all of those things in gear. And if you don't know, 
there is no heart in doing your research or in finding out from persons who are seasoned business people so that you can get your job, whatever you want to do, up and running. Yes, Andrew, what would you say? Well, I, I agree with, with Vernon there, uh, where it, it, it deals with the financial aspect of the business. Yeah. I believe one of the common mistakes, and I, and I, I say this to my students, you have to manage your business finances properly because if you don't do that, your business will flop. Straight up. Correct. A lot of people have the tendency to mix up their business finances with their personal finances. The two don't go, separate them. So when you, if, if you were to go and check their, their books, you'll find that things aren't adding up because why? Uh, let's say they have twenty thousand dollars in their business account they, they want to buy something um, for some friend or, or for the house or something you're going to take out money from the business money and you want to spend it that's not yeah. going to eventually you want to start going downhill and your business will flop so you need to keep your your business and your personal finances separate separate and manage them properly that is a big, big one. So for some of us who like to spend and we like to mix up things, you know, like when I when I when I did my when I started doing my rosette business and I recognized hey, well, I was doing it um mainly to get some more income for in terms of university here. And I recognize that here what sometimes I find my okay, I draw my salary and you know, you just have your cash mix up. And that was so messy because at the end of the day, my my teacher's salary, I'm looking at what did I do with my teacher's salary? Or what? Where did I do? Where, what did I do with the money I got from the Rosette business? So, it's so important and keep your money separate. Just imagine as if this money belongs to you. That's one of the things I had to start telling myself. Shibiki, this money belongs to Shibiki Vivas Rosette. So I, I actually disconnected myself from the monies so as to keep that monies one side and use that money, that those money, especially for when I have things to be done for the business so it doesn't matter who come to me and want to ask and borrow money and all of that that's the business money i'm not touching that money for nothing so some of you we really need to get that that one in and um just to hear trevlon i i, I like one of the questions i asked trevlon here um just going back when i asked him to define business success um to him he said um he would define it about um as the ability of one that you cannot go to the next level unless you're passionate about what business stands for so that's what so he defines business success as being passionate about what you want to do and being able to reach to that level and um and to ensure that the interest that you the interest that you have and what you generated actually will be able to meet the needs of your market out there all right thank you so much trevlon i'm just so sorry that you can't be here and my final question to wrap up today's segment i'm gonna ask you guys um let's say if the first part of the question so you're gonna tell me you're gonna give one major business tip you want to give to persons who are listening based on your experience that's the first part of the question the second part of it um what if somebody establish a business and they get less income what would you advise that person to do? So the first part, um, one business name, one business tip that you will give to someone um, based on your experience as a business owner. And the second aspect of it, what would you what would you advise someone who establishes his or her business and they get less income from what they actually put in? What would be your advice? Let me hear you guys on that those that last question. Well. One business tip I would say is uh, a good thing that you should do as a business person is to reassess your business um, on a regular basis, depending. Okay. It could be monthly, it could be quarterly, it could be yearly, to see exactly um, if you're getting success, if you're getting growth, what you can do to improve, um, any loopholes you can fill. So reassessing your business can really show you exactly what position uh, you're currently in, how you stand, and what you can do if you need to make changes, cuts, or whatever. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. And um, the other part of the question: um, What if what what if what would you advise them if they get less income? Well, 
if they get less income, I would like to uh, see this. Uh, you can apply the same uh, answer that I give um, just now. They need to look at what's happening. You, you, you invest, you get less income. That means there was uh, some issue, some problem. It must be a reason why you have less income. So you, yeah. there you need to go back and, and reassess, look at the whole thing again, see if it's worth it, um, see if you need to make changes, and um, then you can proceed, or maybe you need to change, if necessary, your approach. All right, great. Thank you so much. All right, Andrew, your, your question as we wrap up. Well, I, I support Vernon on his first uh, answer, where he mentioned uh, reassessing the business. But I'll add to that, especially in, in, in the in, in Guyana context here, and this is what I've experienced. You need to make sure that your business is up to date with certain documentations hmm. and certain regulations. Because if you are not, because the fact is there are a lot of small businesses right now, functioning right now in Guyana, and, and they don't have any documentation. Yeah. So because of that, the lack of proper documents and, and registrations and so on, they're missing out on opportunities to grow. Because I remember there, there, there were instances where I didn't have the right documents. I missed out on government grants. Wow. I missed out on loans from IPED and um, Small Business Bureau, all because I didn't have the proper documentations for my business and, and the necessary things. So these are things... Uh, I believe that young entrepreneurs, once you start, not make sure you register your business, have proper documentation, you, you, your taxes are in order, and all of these things, because you will miss out on opportunities. And finally, the, the, the last part of the question if your business isn't getting uh, enough income or any income or, or so on, I believe it, it, it comes down to your uh, income and expenditure your books are not being balanced properly. Mm -hmm. So you have to now go back and reevaluate how you're spending money and look to see how much is going out, what is it going out towards, and try to cut back on those spending. Uh, another factor that can contribute to that is even your, your market. Maybe you need to reevaluate your market and see who or where you're targeting and if it's beneficial. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, great. So um, I am so happy and thank you for all those individuals who would have joined us this um, join us this afternoon here. And this, this program was mainly designed for any young person or anybody in general who may want to establish their own basis, but they don't know how, but just so, to let us, to let you know how our, uh, how these guys here, well, and Tamni was here also, how they are actually running their business and some tips that they would have given to us. I just want to read Sister Gwendolyn's point where she made, um, she said I, she believes that patience is a key characteristic in any business venture and in life. She she has, she has learned that as a cake designer. Hmm. Yeah, because Sister Gwendolyn, she designs a whole lot of cake. I told her already when she, I hope she's in Guyana when I'm ready to get married so that she can actually do my cakes. Um, she says sometimes we want to have something and we want to have it now. Mm-hmm. It helps us also to learn to deal with things and with people. Thank you so much for that response. And um, one of the tips that Trevlon would have sent to me just now, he said that there are many of many individuals who are looking at other business individuals and they want to be just like them. They're not looking at the situation to know what these individuals would have gone through in life, their successes, their failures, their risks and everything. But yet still we look at them, oh, I want to do just like that without thinking and knowing what is unique now to the market and what are we going to bring to the table. So I love his point of submission. So I want to I wanna uh, encourage us as young people, look for something new, look for some, don't look at people's success and determine that, hey, yes, I'm going to reach there. You don't know how many years it took for that individual to reach to that journey in life. I remember before I started Issues in Focus, while it's not a business per se, um, it's a platform to encourage our young people I remember me being discouraged sometime along the way. It's like, should I really start it? Because why? I did not want to do a program um, that is based on me 
publicizing myself or or just looking at the amount of views that i have and for that to be my driving force so because of that because i did not want to that i got this i'm like lord i really don't want to do this thing and then i become this you know this there's some people who just do things for attention i said i don't want to do to start issues and focuses and attention to me you know show me somewhere show me some avenue and i remember praying about it should i really start it and it so happened i got on netflix and i saw this documentary from michelle obama um becoming one that is based on our book she did a documentary on it and i sat there that night and i'm i'm reading i'm listening to her and i'm like yes lord you know what this is it you is like i got everything i needed in that documentary to show to say to me should be if i just go right ahead you start issues in focus you're not doing it for you but it will be able to touch the lives of others and for me it that is what motivated me and that's why when i do this program i always say it may not be you the person who you need this program but it may be somebody else on your facebook page who may need that encouragement at that particular point in time so i just want to encourage all of us this afternoon you may not have found this program being the most um the most enthusiastic and the most laughable one but it's one to encourage somebody out there who may have need just a little bit nitty grit of encouragement to go further to start their business venture so i want to um i want to encourage us just share this video to somebody you don't know who i want to uh i want to say officially thanks to those individuals who would have joined me today andrew samson um vernon Bennett. Uh, we have Tammy Carmichael Hunt who was here earlier with us. Trevlon Craig who was here earlier also. Um, Kenisha signed on, but she couldn't because of the internet um, connection. She couldn't get on. I just want to say, Kenisha lives in my village, and she she's a hair designer. But she she looks after hair. Almost a lot of stuff she does for brides also, right? So if you want her contact, please. And you live in especially in the west coast of Barbies, you have an event to go. You don't know where to go to do your hair. Um, you can make contact with me. She will, and I'm, I'm going to connect you to her and um, she can get things done for you. So there's so many business people out there. Esther, um, if you want your dresses sewn and everything, you can contact me also. I can get you connected with her. So thanks once again for being here. On Wednesday, I want to listen to our young people. Janessa, that's all right. You can watch the program after. Renisha, I'm so happy that you stayed through with us. Um, I want you on Wednesday. You can't afford to miss Wednesday's episode. We are dealing with love. Is it love or infatuation? And what about the compatibility issue? Right? So that's our program for Wednesday. I already have a series of individuals lined up. And there is something about love that so many people, I have to tell some of my persons who are invited to speak here, we are full. We cannot take any more persons on that day for love. Right? So I want you to join with us on Wednesday, same time, same place at two. Let us have a wonderful time. Be here, you can send your questions to these individuals so that we can have a wonderful session here. So I'm gonna see you next time. Thanks once again, guys. Um, please ensure to leave your, your, your contact information so I can put it in the, the section below so that persons can connect you. So may God bless you all. Let us just pray as we close. Loving God and Father, which art in heaven, we are thankful for the opportunity that we had this afternoon. Listening to the wisdom and the, the passion that you would have given these individuals so that they could have turned their passions into productivity. I pray, Lord, for some young minds, some uh, older folk who may be listening and don't know, didn't have the encouragement to start their business, but may they be motivated and encouraged by this episode so that they can be able to make some monies on their own. Have their way, we pray, to Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. See you again next time, Wednesday, 2 p.m., as we deal with the topic of love or infatuation and what about compatibility. See you. Thanks for tuning in today.